Hello, can you hear me? Welcome to this session. Um, my name is Sadek Shahadu, and I will be presenting this session on behalf of the Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. And I have my co-presenter online, um, Sadip. He'll be joining us shortly. Um, so I, I will be here. talking to you about the Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub's works and the research that we did in uh, 2022 in October. And I'll be sharing more with you the findings, um, the background of the hub, and the method that we used in the interview, and then also the findings and then the next steps. So um, the Language Diversity Hub initiated it was uh, the initiative started in 2021, building upon the existing Wikimedia um, language diversity network, which started way back in 2012. And the purpose of this was to like support and connect affiliates and volunteers to new and smaller language versions of Wikimedia projects. And we have been working on this project since 2021, and we have a steering committee from a very diverse linguistical background and also from different regions of the uh, world. So this is the list of steering committee members, and I'm sure some of you may be familiar with their usernames. And Amir, and Amkwe Ayumu, John from Kenya, Norway, and Mali, Oscar, Sadip, who is my co-presenter, myself, and then um, that is the steering committee member for members for the Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub. We also have uh, an observer steering committee who are members from the Wiki Tongues and uh, Art and Feminism, and also um, Wikimedia UK. So what? exactly where we trying to uh, you know discover or investigate so the research was focused on understanding the limitations uh, within the smaller language media communities and we wanted to understand what is limiting the contrib contributors of new language wikipedia editions that is uh, from the start in the incubator to when they are approved and the method we used to conduct this research was semi-structured interview with contributors from different countries and we were looking at identifying um, you know four types of barriers that these communities are facing prior to that we had conducted like a survey within ourselves to see some of the topmost um, priorities uh, as far as the research is concerned so when we talk about the challenges faced by smaller language Wikimedia communities, we are talking about challenges that most of us are already aware of, especially those who are working closely with language communities. Some of them are challenges that we uh, can simply address by working collaboratively together. Some of them are also like um, challenges that the uh, foundation can work to support. And we had like uh, open questions where we invited um, contributors or participants of the research to exchange their information via Zoom. And I also conducted some of the sessions in person, uh, especially at the Wiki in Daba. I engaged like uh, some committee members from the Igbo and P Ghana, um, Nigerian Pigeon Wikimedia communities. And but largely we conducted most of the interview sessions online because of the different uh, time zones that um, people were on and also the fact that we we did not get the opportunity to travel to meet most of these people because of limited uh, funding support so most of the interviews are uh, already like uploaded on our uh, youtube channel that you can watch later and in terms of identifying which community we should work with uh, we try to uh, look at the uh, how you know the community are involved in the Wikipedia project. We also wanted to make sure we are having a globally represented community. And then, uh, of course, we wanted to make sure that there's somebody that we can speak to who is already involved in these uh, communities. So if you look on my screen, you see uh, languages that we engage from South Asia, Middle East, uh, the Caribbean, um, ESAP, and uh, Northern and Western Europe. We have from Middle East, uh, Dagbani, uh, Gruni, Igbo, and Nigerian Pidgin. And then Isa, we have Paiwan and Mon Wikipedia, and the other uh, languages from different parts of the regions. 
So, like I said, we wanted to engage them to understand the real challenges, not just uh, like a survey. We could, uh, you know, conduct um, surveys like most uh, communities do, but we wanted to get like in-depth information from them, and we wanted them to share this information personally with individuals who are part of the community, especially those that they are already familiar with. We believe that this will allow them to share more information and we will be able to use that to analyze our data from the research. And there's a YouTube chan um, channel that we've created for this and you can find all the research, the, the uh, in-person and online research that we did by going to this tiny URL. And so yeah, we needed somebody who is very closer to the community and also the possibility of getting the approval of the community that we were engaging so that we can get a smooth flow of uh, the work. And this took um, quite a long time between August and November in 2022. So what we also wanted to understand was like, even though we selected random community members from different um, language groups, we wanted to understand why their motivation of accepting to be part of this um, research program. So most of them shared that they want to bring knowledge about their language and culture to the next generation and the rest of the world. And others shared that they are interested in conserving the knowledge about culture, history, and tradition from their language communities. And most of them were also sharing about revitalizing their language and then doing something for their culture and people. Now let's talk about the barriers. So when we talk about the barriers, we were looking at uh, technical barriers, economic barriers, social and education and knowledge related barriers. So for technical knowledge, um, te technical barriers, we're looking for um, other, what are some of the technical challenges that they face in terms of like language. We know when we talk about language, most of them would have uh, different, um, you know, keyboards or maybe they have like, uh, some special characters that are not currently supported in the Wikimedia um, ecosystem, or if they have, how do they easily navigate through these um, keyboards? Um, then uh, in terms of technology, again, we looked at the incubator. Uh, if you are cur currently working on the incubator projects, um, you will realize that it is not user friendly as um, people would think, like if you are very new to Wikimedia, uh, movement or you are just starting up a, a new language project. It is not really um, as easy as we wanted it to be. So we wanted to see some of the challenges that people face in these um, uh, projects on uh, the incubator. So we also looked for uh, like those who are really interested in getting like basic knowledge in terms of like training, how they can effectively organize online and in-person training for committee members. So these were technical like skills like um, training people how to use Wikidata tools, training people how to use specific like, uh, you know, gadgets on Wikimedia or Wikipedia projects. And then we looked at the economic barriers. So econo economic barriers, uh, most of the committee members we engaged complained of not having like enough, um, you know, time to contribute to Wikipedia and some of them uh, complained about uh, the cost of internet data and equipment. I know most of you are already familiar with these challenges as far as um, con communities from uh, you know, the global south is concerned, especially in Africa. And there's also like uh, unemployment issues related to these economic barriers. And then the most uh, surprising thing was the lack of interest in volunteering. So what exactly is uh, stopping people from contributing to Wikipedia or being like volunteers? And then we talked about the social um, barriers uh, with few um, of the participants and we realized that there were too few contributors to these smaller language projects on the incubator especially. And then the gender imbalance at the early stage, they are very small language projects and we already see um, like a huge gender gap, like the number of female contributors, for example, were very limited as compared to the male contributors. And also those who contribute to biographies of uh, female content, we try to like identify their username and engage them to learn more about why they mostly like contribute to articles related to women in Africa. 
And then we talked about education and other uh, knowledge related barriers. Uh, we discovered that the language is not taught. Most of the languages that we engage, like the Dagbani, is not like taught uh, in schools, even though it's one of the government sponsored languages. Uh, and the other challenge is that there's no like uh, rich online resources for teachers or students who want to teach Dagbani in schools, for example. So in Ghana, we engage like the Dagbani community and also the Gruni community, which I'm closely uh, uh, connected to. There's also not like standardized um, written version of the language, which is very, very uh, uh, challenging for most people to continue to contribute to Wikipedia. And then uh, challenges with language um, knowledge and uh, also in the community. Even though we have so many like um, students and teachers within some of these uh, language communities, but there's still like limitations to what resources they can get to contribute to Wikipedia in their various languages. So in summary, um, the work that are done by uh, small language Wikimedia contributors uh, is really, really remarkable. And I think there has been like an uh, increase in the number of people who contribute to smaller language Wikipedia projects. And there has also been like a, uh, and like a lot of new language incubator projects, uh, projects coming out from these uh, language communities like the Dagbani, uh, when I engaged them at the initial stage, they had only um, two language uh, communities like the Gruni and the Dagbani. Now um, I've seen like a few more languages coming from the group, which is very great. So the largest barrier for many emerging Wikipedia communities are even outside the Wikimedia community. So these are some of the things that we want to discuss and also learn from the community, how we can connect uh, like non-Wikimedia communities to Wikimedia uh, communities or affiliates to be able to work together and provide like solution for these communities. And we looked at uh, how we can also connect linguists and also language technologies outside the Wikimedia movement and those who have like a professional background, uh, especially technology that are related to, uh, you know, languages or language revitalization. And within the movement, we have most of the resources needed. I know uh, we have a lot of, let's say, money to support these communities, but we don't know where to channel that money to and who need this. Um, you know, resources the most. So what is our next step? Uh, my colleague um, Sadip will be joining us. I don't know if he's online. Okay, so Sadip, if you are ready, please let me know. And our next step, we have proposed a grant, grant proposal and the grant proposal is through the Movement Strategy Grant. And this pro grant proposal will help us, you know, restructure, uh, keep building the uh, hub and also organize like more regular meetings to engage more of these language communities. It is also a way to foster collaboration among the language communities and also provide like technical support and language support for these communities. We have already started engaging, um, you know, uh, you know, individuals and organizations that are interested in supporting us. Uh, Galingo from um, Norway, who are you know, they, they are very much interested in providing uh, support, like keyboard support for these language communities that we work with. So as part of our next grant program, we would like to provide like a, a robust solution, especially those who need um, support with um, keyboard uh, for their various languages. And then we also focused on uh, need assessment, how can user groups or chapters better understand or support um, the smaller language Wikimedia communities. And then uh, we engage uh, most of the steering committee members who are also members of the Wikimedia language committee to understand what exactly we can do to improve the incubator. And if that is still necessary for smaller or test wikis. Um, for me personally, when I started uh, engaging most of these language committees, it was really difficult to, you know, to teach them how to, um, you know, do basic things like adding ref references on Wikipedia in the incubator. Um, the fact that you have to like use templates on Wikipedia 
uh, the incubator is really a big challenge, especially for those who are just joining the movement. We assume that not everybody would have um, the technical knowledge to be able to create templates or use templates on the incubator. So this is one of the things that we want to see improve within um, the uh, Wikimedia incubator uh, interface. And then uh, we are trying to build a network of linguists and language technologists with wiki tongues who already have like a large community base that are working to support language revitalization and as most of us are already aware wiki tongues is one of the uh, affiliates who are working so much with language communities and we want to you know partner with them to improve uh, our work and also support their initiatives especially the language accelerator program that they are currently uh, you know doing with within the africa communities and we want to expand this work we want to keep engaging people via interviews to document and build uh, a, a solid uh, foundation for other people to you know leverage on uh, we also want to help document um, resources for um, the incubator there is currently no like resources available for people especially those who are working with smaller language communities so we want to see how best we can collaborate to create like uh, more resources and documentation for those who need it most um, most of the times uh, community leaders have to always like reinvent their world so if you are working with for example language a and after supporting them to get out of the incubator you have to go back again and start doing the same thing with the next language so if there's a possibility of us like having a documentation or rich online resources either on wikimedia commons or maybe youtube or other forms of um uh, documentation that people can easily find and learn from so that we don't have to always like start from scratch so this is very important to us as a hub and we want to see this implemented in the next phase of our program so another thing that we want to do is to define um, the governance of the hub and also um, answer the questions of how a hub should look like and we are also interested in building as i said in my earlier presentation uh, slides we want to build an infrastructure for keyboard and language technology so if you are interested in you know collaborating with us you have like uh, any community that is working to support these um, challenges we'll be very happy to you know have you on board now my colleague sadip would join us to discuss um, i'm also looking for feedback uh, comments, suggestions on how we can improve um, the work that we do and also the possibility of collaborating with other affiliates as a hub. Yeah. So over to you, Sadiq. Thank you so much, Sadiq, for having me here. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending this conversation. I'd first like to acknowledge all the support that uh, uh, the initial hub discussions that we've been having and the research that we did. Uh, for that, all the support we had from the steering committee, from especially from Mali and John Harold from the committee in Norway. And, you know, uh, I'm not sure how much time we have, uh, but I'll just like to open it up for a conversation. Uh, I'll also invite you all to read the, uh, the, the proposal for what the hub aims to do in, in the coming years. Um, but so far on what you've heard, uh, I'll just like open up the space if you have any questions or feedback uh, based on what you what you heard so far are we missing something should we be focusing on something else then let's say working on the wikimedia incubator should that be someone else's responsibility uh, but then whose responsibility um, can we better support the different communities across the globe um, how can we do that uh, and finally, are there affiliates or individuals in the room uh, or beyond who would like to join uh, forces with, uh, with this uh, hub experiment that we're doing? Um, yeah, so just want to open it up as much long as time we have. It's supposed to be more of a conversation around uh, anything that you uh, think would be most useful uh, for now. Thank you so much uh, for having me here. Thank you so much, Sadiq, for the presentation. I'll just, uh, I'll remain here to listen to any questions and if needed to respond to anything. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sadiq. 
So we are looking for feedback, as I said, and this is going to be like an open conversation. Um, if you are working with an affiliate that is interested in supporting the hub, we will be very much excited to hear from you. And if you have any feedback for us as a hub, what can we improve on? What can we, you know, change as a hub? This would be very, very useful to us. It was supposed to be like a panel session, but unfortunately only a few of us are here and my colleague Sadiq will be joining to hear more. And if you have any question for me, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you. So the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, my name is, is Geoffrey from uh, the Wikimedia Community User Group in Uganda. So yeah, we do have a local language Wikipedia called the Luganda Wikipedia that we're trying to uh, grow uh, in the country. And yeah, we are very much interested in uh, the initiative and joining hands with the hub. So uh, thank you for the good work so far. Uh, I think my question is, uh, yeah, how do you see this hub uh, working with the other hubs because the other hubs that are also being formulated and maybe they are also trying to see how they can support uh, local language wikipedias in their region so uh, just trying to think like yeah how do we uh, how do we plan to avoid duplication of efforts when uh, those regional hubs are also trying to uh, support uh, local language wikipedias have you had like discussions with them and how do you envision that working out thank you so much for the question and i'm so happy to hear that there are uh, new language committees also coming up in uganda and my colleague sadip would like to maybe sadip are you ready to speak about this i know he has been working with um, a few um you know, other hubs who are also interested in collaborating with us. Yeah, so. Yeah, sure. I think that's, first of all, that's a really important question that uh, we all uh, should sit together and think about. Um, but on a very simple answer would be that most of the regional hubs uh, kind of will be addressing more regional issues. Uh, for instance, uh, bringing in new communities um, on, you know, and, you know, maybe addressing some of these concerns, like let's say economic or social barriers, maybe they can address those, but then the hub at more of a, a global level can kind of support the infrastructure. Uh, let's say if we are, uh, if we are improving the incubator, uh, if that's something that we do, that would then support, uh, languages across the world, not, uh, specific to any region. So I do see that there, uh, you know, th there are opportunities to collaborate, but then again, there is a lot of work needs to be done. And I, I, I don't, I don't have this fear that there's going to be uh, a, a situation where we are duplicating it. it more, I, I, I see more, more like, uh, like an image I, I remember from the, the movement strategy, uh, which was of an orchestra. We're all working or playing a different instrument and making uh, beautiful music together, I hope. Thank you so much, Sadip. Any more? So as I said, we are looking for affiliates to join us. We are looking for um, affiliates who are interested in collaborating with us. They necessarily do not have to be like a language affiliate or a, an affiliate that is working specifically on language project, but any language uh, affiliate or chapter that is interested in like supporting our work. We are also currently looking for uh, fiscal sponsors, you know. So if you know your hub can help us, you know, improve our work, receive um, support from foundation. Um, this will be very, very um, useful to us. Any more question, suggestion, comment? 
Okay, I have five more minutes left. Oh, my time is up. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.